Hey guys, I'm back with another YouTube video and today I have another watch me work and I'll be creating some press on nails for one of my clients. So now I'm removing all of the shine off the press on nail tips to prevent the polish from peeling off after I apply my gel. So this press-on set is for one of my clients that's about to become a nurse and since she can no longer book with me, we're doing her some press-on nails and this was not the only set that I created for her, but I wanted to make sure that the press-on nails resembled my work and just gave people something a little more flashy than what they would normally do. So my goal with my press-on nails is to give you something that you probably wouldn't or cannot wear. After you've removed the shine off of the press on nails, you'll wanna use your hand file to flatten the bottom. Do not shape the size of these nails. Please, you're not putting acrylic on these nails. We are just using gel polish. And I tried to shape the size of the nails on my first press on set and they just, it really didn't look right. I don't recommend shaping these unless you are, of course, using acrylic. And if you guys would like to see me use acrylic on some press ons, we can go over that as well. And of course, I will be leaving everything that I used in this video down below in the description box. Here, I'm using some alcohol to cleanse the nail and to remove any dust particles that may be on the surface. You guys do not want any dust on the nails as you're painting because of course, the particles will show. So I will be freestyling on these press on nails as I said earlier in this video and my client did pick the color pink. So the first thing I'm going to do is apply my first coat of gel polish onto the middle finger, pinky and the thumb. Now clearly, I don't paint. I do not work with gel polish at all. I am not the best when it comes to painting, but I can say that I've gotten a lot better. So I do recommend buying a box of gel polish off Amazon. It's about $30 and it'll probably come with between 20 and 25 colors. I really do recommend it when you are doing press ons because like me, you like to freestyle a lot and you just have a variety of colors to offer to your clients. Thank you. 
So guys, this is a method that I use when I am freestyling and I'm not really too sure what I want to do. I'll always leave two or three of the nails already painted a solid color so I could later come back and do a simple design or apply stickers to those nails. And I also do this when I'm working on my clients to kind of limit my ideas so I'm not bouncing everywhere. And I think that's where people mess up when it comes to freestyles. You just have so many ideas that you just don't know what to do. So. On these nails, I painted three of the nails pink, and for the other two nails, I told myself I'm either going to do a full stone nail or a type of large stone cluster design, maybe some pixie crystals, and maybe some 3D flowers on the other clear nail, or maybe some foils. There's just so many things you could do with nails. I try to limit myself as I'm freestyling to not scare myself or push myself in the wrong direction. I told you guys I wanted to make these nails pop. I wanted to make them really extra. So now I'm adding some LV stickers onto these nails, but I'll only be adding them to the pinky and the thumb. I'm later gonna paint these nails with a matte top coat. I really feel like matte makes everything look 10 times better, especially with the rhinestones or the Swarovski. Either way, it really makes the stones pop, so I recommend y'all get y'all some gel polish, some matte gel polish. see you guys i will be going live tonight on my instagram at 8 p.m and my instagram is going to be linked down below it's 8 p.m eastern time i am in georgia and i just want people to share their experiences being nail techs hair doers braiders i said hair doers <laughs> hairstylists braiders lash techs just anybody i really just wanted to kind of come together and just share different experiences and maybe like get different ideas off of each other and have a few people join the live with me as well so if y'all interested in that join me tonight at 8 p.m
this next finger, I'll be doing a full stone nail and I will be using my Dulé Nail Bling Glue. Now, of course, the full stone fingers are more time consuming, but I promise y'all that full stone nails just make sets look better. Like, I don't know what it is and I'm not sure why I stopped doing full, well, I do know why they're time consuming. But I recently started doing the full stone nails again and I love them. Like, at first I thought they were a little too time consuming, but girl, you better pick up the pace. So when you are doing full stone fingers, I highly recommend that you use larger stone shapes to fill in a lot of the area and of course you can just use your smaller stones to go around it. I feel like it saves a lot of time and it still looks really pretty. For this next nail, I'm just going to do a large stone design and a few people actually asked me for a stone placement video. If you guys are interested in that, we could definitely go over that. But I do recommend if you're not really too sure what to do with the stones, stack them on top of each other like I'm doing in this video and put smaller stones between them. It always looks nice. And I love to use this if, of course, I get stuck on what to do with my stones or if I'm running out of stones, but I still have a decent amount to do a little somewhere. So now that that's all finished, I'm now going to add some 3D flowers and I told you I'm trying to make these extra. I'm trying to make these press-ons the most expensive press-ons possible. So I'm adding as many things as I can.
I do have a separate video on 3D flowers and I recently learned a few new tricks when it comes to doing 3D flowers so I may post an updated video because I learned how to do more flowers so y'all get to learn too. But as I said, I do have a more detailed tutorial when it comes to 3D flowers. I'm still going to go over it in this video but if you're a little more interested I could give you a link to a video that's just on flowers. So for 3D flowers, you do want to make sure that your beads are a little dry as you're placing them onto the nail so that they don't run and you can create that perfect petal. Right here, I'm using the tip of my nail brush to apply pressure to the middle of the bead to create a petal. So for the most part, I'm only using the very tip of my brush to create the petal. And if you want the petal to be wider, of course, you would apply more pressure using the body of the brush. So when it comes to sizing and measurements for your client's personal nails, I do recommend that you just let them measure their finger using the tape and ruler method simply because I feel like it'll be easier than me shipping you a package. Then I gotta wait for you to get the package depending on how fast you paid for shipping. And then whenever it does get to you, then I could start. But I don't really wanna do that. Like I really didn't like that method, I felt like of course, I did have to wait and there was a lot of back and forth with it. So instead, I just let them measure their finger using a ruler and some tape because it's much easier and I can just get the exact measurements one, two, three. And if their finger lands in between two sizes, just make an extra one just in case because it wouldn't hurt to make an extra one. And I don't really like having them already made simply because what if I ship you these press-ons and one of them don't fit your nail at all? Now you got press-on nails and one of them don't fit. So just to prevent that, I really don't like using that method. I know there are some nail techs that make their press-ons in bulk and make like 15 um, nails per set. I'm not doing that. These nails are too extra. I do not make the little plain nails, a little plain background with a little cow print. I don't do that. So I cannot just make a bunch of nails hoping that, you know, somebody going to buy all this product off me. Also, y'all don't mind my nails. They look a little crazy right now. I'm knowing. I'm knowing. Yes, y'all, these press-ons is cute. I ended up doing the other hand off camera 
but I am now using my matte gel top coat to paint over these nails. So I'm always talking to you guys about how I'm releasing a nail supply store soon and this is my logo. I'm not going to post it yet. I'm just being very patient and I wanted the nail supply store to be perfect for you guys before releasing anything. That is my logo. I did copyright it. It's mine. A new name. Everything. Oh my god. There's just so much I have for you guys in store. I really do appreciate you guys for being so patient with me. I know I was supposed to start this story so long ago, but so many things has happened in this month and I really do appreciate the ones that sticked around. So I am using a larger packet because my client actually ordered two sets of press on nails and this is only the first row. So that's why the package is gonna be so big. But there are many different methods for how you can display your nails. And I'm going to leave a few down below so you guys can pick and choose between what you think is best for you. Now, when it comes to sizing... This is the final look and if you guys enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe and I'm going to see you guys in the next video.